All right, just starting to stream. Let me check YouTube. You tell me if you get anything. And also I'll check on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I see us on Face YouTube. Do you see us on Facebook? Oh, no, because I have I got to us on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait. Yeah. I have to actually click go live on Facebook. That's why there's a difference. Go live. Go live. So we're now live on YouTube and two places on Facebook, Atheist Republic Facebook page and Atheist Republic Facebook group, which is amazing, right? So three places at the same time. We're making this more complicated for no reason every every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the latest news on religion, atheism, secularism. I have Ali here with me. Hi, Ali. Hi. Um, okay, so Ali is going to be keeping an eye on the live chat on both on YouTube and uh, can you do both Facebook uh, live chats or is that too much? I think it's too much. I think I can. Yeah, oh, let, you me, can? Okay. let me see if I can get that pulled up. Why not? Right. <laughs> um, we, Ali, if, uh, she's going to be reading only comments if they're relevant to what we're saying, right? Like not um, unless like sometimes people ask opinions about something completely random. Um, so, also, um, Ali, if anybody uses a super chat, let us know. It doesn't happen that often with our channel, but if it does, just let uh, let me know so we could like mention it. Uh, yep. Okay. Also, yeah. Okay. So, if you are, by the way, if you're trying to, if you uh, if you're trying if you want to get this pod um, news weekly news on our podcast, the audio version only only. Uh, we do have a podcast version of this, so go to your podcast app and search for Atheist Republic. Right now, there should be two Atheist Republic podcasts showing up. One of them is Atheist Republic voicemails. The other one is Atheist Republic discussions. By the way, do I have audio? Last time, I we didn't have audio. Greetings, Beach. Oh, yeah. Jeremy, live. Jeremy, hey there again. Okay, Mikey, hi, everyone. Derek is hi. That's the YouTube live chat. That's fantastic. So everything that must be working because nobody's telling me like last time that they don't have audio. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So and um, also, guys, if you um, uh, guys want to support this podcast, go to our Patreon page on Atheist Republic and supporting it. We were actually very close to running out of money with Atheist Republic and paying our Very crew member, close. yeah, pay, paying for everything. But then we got the, like, I, somebody just donated $10,000, which is now going to keep us going for a while more. So thank you so much to that person that donated. Um, but, um, I mean, that's that, is, that was great and all, but we can't rely on these helicopter donations to keep going. We, it, it's going to, I mean... What we need to, what we need is smaller, consistent donations, right? To be able to pay for everything going forward, right? So if you guys want to donate one dollar, two dollars for if, or three dollars, whatever for each one of these episodes that we put out and other uh, other uh, episodes that we put up, please support us on Patreon. We were getting very, very close to not having enough money to continue. I, this it seems like God is on our side, doesn't it? Because we were getting yeah. <laughs> like if if we didn't if we were anyone else, we would credit this to God because this was like we were getting really close to not having enough money, and all of a sudden, I mean, really close. Like yeah. this would would have been our last month close. Yeah, and then we got it like right right when we needed it. We got a ten thousand dollar donation. So. I mean, thank you, God, I guess. <laughs> <It seems> like, <laughs> if there is a God, guys, if you guys believe in gods and miracles, it seems like they he's he's backing the wrong side. He doesn't anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so all right, so what we covering the news today, right? So what's the first we one? We are, yes. Yeah. Our first one uh is is really sad. Um a priest prayed for forgiveness while raping a girl. This is what she told the court. Uh, I just want everyone to know, so this priest in Australia is being accused of uh, raping a girl when she was 13 back in the 80s, um, and he's being charged of 18 charges of rape and acts of indecency um, against this girl. So this is one victim. Uh, 18 charges are being brought against him, and he has pleaded not guilty. Uh, but this woman, who is now 44 years old, 
broke down into tears as she was giving a graphic account to the to the court, telling them that um, she was she had to take violin lessons with him, and she was studying a piece, a Bach piece, um, and the priest the priest pulled her away from violin lessons to talk to her about her dog, Lily, who had been hit by a car um, and, and died. So he told her, let's start praying so that you can, uh, you can see Lily again. And as he pulled her up onto his lap to do that, he started touching her. And um, one of the things that she said that really sparked the, the huge controversy here was, while he was raping me, he was uttering, please, God, forgive me. Um, and it's something that Terry, the, the author of this article here, brings up, something that I think is really uh, interesting, is that, you know, if a priest is, if, if this happened and he's, he's sitting there uh, praying while he's raping her, God, please forgive me, you know, why, why wasn't he praying, please stop me, you know, send me to hell, something like that. No, it's just, please forgive me. Um, um, well, I mean, technically, if you go by Christian doctrine, this guy is going to be, if if this story is true, this guy is going to be cleared off of, any, because you, you just, isn't that how it works? Whatever, whatever your sins are, as long as you are believe in Jesus and he died for your sins, and you're going to go to heaven. Like, like the, based on Christian doctrine, is my is that correct right absolutely yeah. yeah you can do anything ask for forgiveness but you do have to repent uh is another part of that that doctrine and so this guy clearly according to the alleged victims accusations uh he did not repent because he has 18 pending charges against him for different times that he raped her uh, during these violin lessons he was supposedly giving. So, uh, is there any other girls that are accusing? Any other? Nope. It's just it's just this one. But another another pretty fucked up part of the story is that uh, during that account that she was talking about, where he used her dead dog um, to to get her onto his lap so he could start molesting her. Uh, once he's done raping her and her mother is waiting outside to pick her up from the violin lessons, he followed the girl outside to talk to her mom and said she didn't do well on her violin, on her violin lesson and she's in a mood. Uh, okay. So he, he, how old was she when this happened? 13. And how old is she now? Uh, 44. Okay. And so, so people will tell us in this situation that when the, when when there was allegation of sexual abuse, when it comes to atheists, uh, high-profile atheists, right? We were being um, we were trying to be uh, skeptical as well as not tell, not claim that anybody is lying here, right? So right. why are we, for example, I, well, do do we apply the same standards here? I, I absolutely. I'm also using the word alleged and if this happened i'm yeah being as as skeptical as possible here so as well. we were saying this is um i mean we're saying if this happened this guy is the like we're saying allegedly and hopefully if this happened he gets the full uh weight of the law coming down on him right so absolutely but we always have to be careful by using the words allegedly and saying if this if this is true and everything right and you, just to be clear whenever you say if and when you say allegedly you're not you're not claiming that it did not happen right a lot of people That's think right. a lot of people you think you're being a rape apologist if you're saying allegedly or if you're saying if this happened no because you're not saying it didn't happen you're just you're just being careful because you're not in the position to be a judge uh, right now, right? I mean, we're just sitting here behind our computers and reading stories. We can't just, we are not in a position to uh, always know what, uh, what happened, right? So, um, right. so yeah, if, we, if we're saying that about people in the atheist community, that standard shouldn't change because this guy is a priest. In fact, it might, we might even be more, uh, have to be even more skeptical when it comes to a priest because uh, how many priests have been accused of, how many priests have been accused and proven to be child molesters. Uh, it might be, because, because of that, we might, um, a lot of people might just assume, okay, this is just another piece, priest, 
so it must be true um and yeah. you know so so that that's that logic doesn't you know hold so that's why i'm thinking like because of your because of our biases against religious figures um i do think that we have to be even more careful uh Absolutely. but but again if this is true i hope i hope he gets the punishment that he deserves well, and, and there's another aspect of this, too, that a lot of people criticize, and that is, why did she wait so long to step forward and say something? Um, I don't know about the statute of limitations in Australia. I mean, clearly this has already hit court, so I, I don't know, you know. But uh, in America, you know, you're not able to press charges against someone once you wait that long uh, over certain crimes. So a lot of people want to know, why do victims wait so long before stepping forward? Well, I mean, uh, you know, when I when I was a kid, um, well, when I was a teenager, I was in a in a taxi, right? Uh, I was in Shiraz in Iran, and I was going from school to home. And I when I sat in the taxi, the taxi driver just he puts his hand on my legs, right? And he starts playing with me, right? And I remember. And I, I asked a taxi driver to just stop. I want to get out. And he was like, no, don't worry. I'll take you wherever you want. And I'm like, no, I'm getting out right here, right? And then I got out of the car. And I remember being so shocked and so disgusted. And I felt like I didn't tell anybody. Um, I mean, it, I would have preferred if I, like a whole bunch of people just... Uh, were beating me up at that point instead like i would have preferred that i don't know why it doesn't i don't know why i would have preferred that but i would have preferred that and i if that happened i would have gone home and i told my parents that hey i've just been beaten up i would there would be a shame in that and sh but this seems so sh shameful and disgusting and i think the reason why i didn't tell anybody is just it just for me it didn't seem like this is something that's supposed to happen to a boy like i don't you know what i mean i feel like my manlyhood yeah. would have gone uh, we'd be taken away. There's so much disgust and shame, and uh, as a boy, and I think may maybe it would have been stronger as a girl. I'm not sure. Like maybe as a girl, people would make you think that this was somehow your fault, right? Right. Um, there's just a lot of psychological. Your brain just starts, you know, doing some weird shit when something like this happens, right? So I didn't tell anybody about that i wanted to take that to my grave at that point right that that happened yeah. right so i mean i don't know why people don't t t tell right away but i i know that it's sometimes i mean i as i le i mean I, I i can't imagine if i was like a iranian teenage girl i might not even told the guy you know i'm not i'm this is i'm not, I'm not sure by the way right but a lot of girls in society being put in the pressure to even, and this is not true for all girls. Right now, I've actually seen Iran. It's actually most of the women that are speaking out, right, in the protest. Yeah. But society sometimes does put you as a girl in a position to feel like you're not supposed to speak or say or uh, complain. And I wonder if I was a, a that I forgot how old I was, but if I was just a few years younger, I might have not said anything even. And this guy might have right. took, this guy might have taken me I don't know where right, so I was yeah. just a little bit stronger to react, but if it was someone else, or if I was a few years younger, not only I would not report it, I might have just you know the guy I might have been so so disgusted, but still not be able to strong enough to get him to stop right. So right. I don't know it's complicated. I mean, a lot of people that are now adults or are have stronger personalities and just say no to what they don't like, it's hard for them to imagine what it is to be in a position uh, psychologically not to be able to report something or not to be able to say no to something, right? Right, absolutely. And that's another thing. You know, she was already humiliated. She was already, you know, if again, if, if this is the case, what she's reporting, um, you know, and any victim, any victim after they've been victimized, they, they already feel a lot of guilt, they feel a lot of shame, um, and they don't feel strong, right? They were just abused or taken advantage of or um, anything like that. And so it takes, it takes so much strength to come forward and call the police or tell your mom on, on your way home from violin lessons. Um, 
strength, whatever it is, it takes so much strength and you've already been beaten down. So it's, it's a lot harder to just come out and say this happened. You think that part of the power, part of the way you get your power back is, you know, next time I'm going to fight back. I'm, I'm going to, this is going to stop and my life is going to be okay. And I can just put all this behind me. Um, and there's, there's a billion different excuses why people won't come forward right away. But I, I do think that it's brave, uh, for people to come forward even, you know, 30 years later, it's, I know. Yeah. Um, the top comment is from D is saying, can we legally hunt child rapist yet? Uh, I don't know if D is serious or not, but I hope she's not, um, especially given how easily people are in <laughs> believing that somebody is child rapist, right? I, I'm pretty happy with the legal system that we already have in the United States and Canada. Um, yeah. And I think just to let the law take care of that. But I'm hoping that's a joke. I don't know. Um, Axel is saying, uh, of course, their God is a forgiving God, so the girl should forgive him too. Phew, I'm so glad I'm to be an athe to be atheist. Yeah, actually, that's the point we made. In fact, Christianity not only teaches you that the priest will be forgiven, Christianity will teach the girl, if this is true, that she should also, it's good if she forgives him as well, which is absolute fucking horse shit, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, some things do, do not deserve to be forgiven. This whole forgiveness, everything be forgiveness in Christianity is one of the other, you know, this is, this is what I hate when people say like, you know, maybe Christianity is all bullshit and stuff, but some people need it for morality and stuff. No, it, it actually works exact opposite. It gives you a license to be an asshole. It doesn't actually, you know, it lets you do whatever you want and then you're forgiven as long as you believe in, the th in, the, in their doctrine. And exactly. He, yeah, it's it's it, the best they have to say about Christianity is exactly the opposite of what Christianity does. Any comments on Facebook or YouTube about this that we need to read? Oh, let's see. Not on Facebook, not on the group. Mm -hmm. YouTube, I have saw a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Buddy is here, ex-Muslim from Egypt. Oh, hi, buddy. Be careful. Egypt just made atheism illegal. Um, went from an eye to an eye to close the eye and forget. Oh, B just saying uh, the Christianity went from an eye, an eye to an eye to close close the eyes and forget it which both you're right actually and both of those are problematic way of yeah i think you're basically talking about going from the old testament to the new testament um and both of those methods for getting justice is pro uh, problematic um yeah. all right so next story next story is crazy it's about homeopathy um oh, this this yeah Nat naturopath, I don't know, uh, a doctor gave a boy who had been growling at people, um, she gave him a medicine uh, which no he derived from rabid dog saliva <laughs> um, because it was under her logic that if he's acting in a rabid state, uh, yeah. Oh is this yeah, true? Well, okay. Yes, this is true. <laughs> this is true. So, uh, actually, the boy had really been diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. So, wait, wait, um, go finish this. Story. Because the boy is acting like a rabid dog. So, mm -hmm. just to explain to people uh, that don't know, the way that homeo ho I always have a problem saying this homeopathy, homeopathy. homeopathy yeah. works is that you have to whatever you want to cure you have to get something that uh that is the opposite of the treatment that you want to get right so for example if you want to get a uh, cure for poisoning you have to get the poison and dilute that so many times right so if you want to cure for x then you have to get x itself or something like x itself and then diluted in water so many times, like, you know, millions of times, right? To the point that there is not a single molecule of X left in the water. 
right? Statistically, like, yeah. not statistically, like if you if you actually calculate, so it's kind of like putting a drop of X in an ocean of X, right? Yeah. Right, or six yeah. oceans of X, right? And then technically there's no more X left in the water, right? And that water now diluted, the diluted is the medicine for curing whatever is the cause of X, right? And then when you point to the fact that if you actually look at the numbers, the amount of dilution is so much that X is not there anymore in the water, then the argument for that is that, well, water has memory. So it, it, remember, <laughs> it remembers that the mo X molecules were next to it at some point, which if, th if it's, that's the case, then, then the, every, every drop of water that you drink is, has been next to so many other things, right? Uh, yeah. next, be next to shit as next next to blood as ne been next to good things so uh, does it does it also is, is it now harmful because the opposite of good things is bad things it's just such a such it's such an obviously uh bullshit um, way of treating uh, anything and no like beyond the doubts people have written, know that this is absolute horseshit okay and that it has no benefit other than placebo. It's the most expensive placebo in the world, right? And it's uh, and it's. But the problem is that not only it's common. It's I think it's one of the most common uh, alt bullshit, you know, alternative medicine um, remedy, right? That people have. Like when it comes to alternative medicine, I think homeopathy is the king of it, right? And it's actually, I right. think in the UK, it's actually taxpayer funded. That's how much this is common, right? There are hospitals, complete hospitals that are ma made for um, this, like uh, it's, it's such or such horse shit. I can't believe so much. Oh yeah, goes. and there's also like a hospital for this in Mexico that our consulate went and uh, protested against. Right, by the, way, the Atheist awesome. Republic consulate went in front of it, and they tr I, they did one of the common protests against homeopathy because there are, there's dosage dosage amount amount on so every, every bottle that small bottle you get it has the dose it tells you how much you should take right but yeah mm -hmm. not not to go above it because it would be dangerous which is which is bullshit because it's just water right you can't overdose on water right so people have like these suicide protests that they're trying to commit suicide by overdosing on homeopathic medicine right to show yeah. people <laughs> that this cannot get you killed because it's just water so they just uh, yeah um but anyways, so this in this case, because the, so the doctor, the uh, not, fake doctor, you know, I <laughs> <laughs> tell us because this kid is acting uh, so behavior, his behavior is like a rabbit dog. So op, what's the up? You have to find the opposite of that to dilute it. So you go get the saliva of rabbit. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, some people try to defend it. They say, like, it's, well, placebo. If Because it's placebo, it works, right? But right. Yeah, but the thing is that you could get you could get the effect of placebo by real medicine as well, plus the medicine itself, right? Right. And, yeah. if, if, doc and if real doctors want to trick their, uh, their patients, let's say, for example, you think you have something but you really don't so the doctor tries to tries a placebo on you and just gives you sugar pills right um and tells you that this is going to cure you at least they're not going to charge you as much uh, that <laughs> you know that than what it takes to dilute water a billion fucking times right um right. anyways jeremy is saying yeah. I'm, jeremy is saying i'm scared of humanity so, uh, <laughs> Be, uh, well, it, homeopathy is actually uh, becoming a problem in Canada right now, which I find to be really strange because of the free health care system. Right. Also, this the CA is saying my water never remembers me. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> uh, yeah, Beige is saying we should be cured of everything by now because of water. <laughs> yeah, because every water has touched everything. So we should, yeah. That's very good. This is saying, Armin, did you hear about? Uh, okay, let's let's focus. Is that about the current news? What's it is. Going? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the whole kind of uh, about uh, what is this? Sh uh, Sheridan College was going to offer a diploma program 
in neuropathic medicine, they change their mind due to public outrage. Well, thank you. Thank the flanks by getting myself for that. Uh, Beach, yeah. my pharmacy now. Is, oh my God, Beach is saying my pharmacy now has homeopathy on the bottom shelf, but they have it. Uh, but why have it at all? Yes, fuck. Okay. Yeah, I mean this. This should be. Uh, this I think homeop homeopathy should be uh, sued, like as like as fraud. Shouldn't it like why 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 can't we get like some people? I don't understand how it hasn't yet. Yeah, I... you go I mean, on. I just I don't understand. It, it's not just and people have to recognize that this is not just harmless bullshit. This is actually dangerous because a lot of people when you say alternative medicine, that it means like alternative to real medicine. A lot of people that go for this are basically are not. They are not doing homeopathy and actually seeing a real doctor. They're going for this and not seeing a real doctor. You know what I mean? Like these are right. a lot, people's lives are actually in danger because they are, you know, using this as an alternative to actual treatment. Right. Like like this child, for example, has an actual um, disorder, and so going to this lady and just having him drink some rabid dog saliva water uh, is not going to help this child at all with his oppositional defiant disorder. Um, he needs to be in counseling and he needs real medication. So uh, yeah, like that, that is just horrible. Good news is though um, that a health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry said she's going to be writing to Health Canada to protest its approval um, of One, treatment. More than protests, they should be sued. You know how we have like Freedom From Religion Foundation and they go after anybody that tries to creep religion into public life? They need to... Yeah. The, so that, the atheist movement in the US has the Freedom From Religion Foundation. The skeptic movement, they need to have something similar uh, to go sue uh, companies like this. You know? I think Absolutely. I, I think there needs to be an organization that that basically goes after bullshit like this. I think, but go on. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, that's okay. Uh, but I, I just I think that it's great that a doctor is saying, "Whoa, like we need to we need to do something about this." Um, she has expressed her concerns to the federal government um, over the regular over the regulation of these products. So I, I hope that this is like the start to something. Um, you know, maybe more people step forward protesting this, like you said, maybe even get together and be like, no, let's sue these people um, to make them stop because it, it doesn't. Yeah, everything is your choice. And I get that. I know a lot of people argue that this is up to every individual, whatever their treatment should be. Um, but I feel like this is taking advantage of people because it's not curing anything. Right. So, um I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, but she's saying as long as they follow proper homeopathic procedure is totally safe. And I think she's making fun of the fact, I think she's not actually endorsing it. She's making fun of the fact that it's, uh, that they diluted so much that it's, uh, that the kid is not going to get rabies. Right. Uh, yeah, but it's but still not safe because it's no, no. not getting treated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the point. I, she's not endorsing it, but to put, to, your point is correct. The, this, the danger from it is not from what the kid is taking. The, the danger from it is that the, this kid, uh, is not going to, is not getting proper treatment. Um, let's see. There's another comment here. Uh, from the creators of vaccine cause autism <laughs> and nothing natural can be bad for you comes drinking drool can cure med mental illness <laughs> that's funny that's a good one yeah any comments in the that we need to read uh someone mikhail says homeopathy is a placebo um i yeah. don't yeah, it, is, yeah. it does. It does have a placebo effect, but you could get that from real medicine. You know, medicine has a placebo yeah. effect plus the medicine effect. And if somebody wants to get placebo uh, from real doctors, they at least, um, you know, at least they're not going to substitute this for something ac actually that you actually they emit, uh, a cure that I actually need. Right. So if somebody only needs placebo, the, then the doctor can recognize that they only need placebo 
and give them sugar pills and tell them, here, this is going to help you. Um, and they're going to give it at much lower cost. But the thing is that sometimes people need more than placebo, right? Uh, yeah. And these these people, uh, these so-called doctors are not at all qualified to recognize that if somebody needs. Um, well, you know, one time I took my um, wife. My wife doesn't go to the doctor as much as she needs to, when, but I'm in Canada, so it's free. So every time I, you know, I every time I, she uh, feels bad, I tell her like we need to go to get this check. I mean, come on, it's free, right? So uh, we were looking for a clinic. Everywhere was closed. Um, so I, so I, there was one, this, pl- this place open that I took her to. And then I realized that this is like one of those woobs places. And oh, yeah. I like, I, I kind I was a little bit rude. I don't know if this is okay. And like, and like, um, I told her, let's go find a real doctor. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think the people in the clinic was, were a little bit upset, but I don't know. Um, uh, buddy Ahmad says, uh, if you ate seven dates in the morning, you will not get enchanted or poisoned in that day. And camel pee is good for your health. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there definitely are so many different people that follow those things. Like, of course, you're probably not going to get poisoned or enchanted today, right? Uh, you won't get enchanted any day. But, um, yeah, they do. Like, they'll they'll rub something on their skin or eat something that to, to prevent things that will obviously not happen to them anyways. Yeah. Anyways, let's go to the next one. Next one is Turkish conservatives are getting alarmed by the plague of deism and atheism. So uh, as we all know, Turkey is a fantastic secular country <laughs> um, and it has not been moving towards Islamization. Um, oh my God. Being sarcastic. So uh, yeah, the, the older conservatives are rather alarmed that the youth is sliding to deism. Um, and they've actually been putting out like a lot of, of TV programs, TV shows, uh, articles and stuff focusing on the plague of deism. Um, some of them are even saying that uh, deism is a stain on their country and it's just one stop before atheism. So they don't like it. Uh, and it, to them, this deism atheism outbreak in their youth is uh, is a is a terrible force and so they're kind of cracking down more on islam and everywhere that, that they can so what what is it you mean cracking down on atheism yeah cracking so what, down on atheism so what does that um what does that mean like is is it like becoming official like in egypt as in atheism is illegal or is it just a, a rule that is not on the books but people know that it's a rule you know some uh, and like in some other places, right? Right, yeah. So it's not illegal in their, their country. Their country is still considered a secular country, so people can still have those beliefs. But the older conservatives are uh, scared of those beliefs. And so, um, yeah, they're, they're upping the Islamic... So is this government uh, people, like government officials? Specific- um. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So they actually have a, a religious, um, what is his name? I just want to know exactly what the, this looks like. Is it just some people? The director of religious affairs. Um, oh, he addressed the crisis of budding deists, saying no member of the nation will accept such a deviant thought, um, which is obviously not true. Because Except you're there's... fucking found there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so they they are oh. actually upping like um, education, uh, Islam education in the media and in schools um, to try to you know coerce. I don't know. By the way, I'm not I'm not sure if Ataturk was uh, D- DSA. I'm just guessing it. Okay, so I know I know on the, on on the books. He, I think I mean officially, I think pe- people consider him. Muslim, right? But I think based on what he says and the things that he he what he did, uh, a lot of people agree that he must be not not a Muslim, right? But if anybody wants to educate me on Ataturk, whether if he if he was a Muslim or not a Muslim, I personally think he was not a Muslim. Um, but but anyway, so which is which is so s- sad that this country is going in such a 
opposite direction. This was supposed to be all the countries that were supposed to be um, a model for how Islam and secularism could uh, be, you know, exist uh, peacefully side by side. Malaysia, Indonesia, Turkey, right? They're all going backwards. They're all becoming... Uh, in Egypt also recently made atheism illegal, but Egypt was not, I mean, Egypt was supposed to be considered secular now because Muslim Brotherhood is not in power. CC came into power instead, uh, but now atheism is illegal. Um, Malaysia is, um, as you all, as people here know, they're hunting down atheists after the Atheist Republic consulate picture came out. Indonesia the islamic yeah. uh, the uh, the islamic group in indonesia is getting more influence and having um you know they're becoming uh, everywhere same to going backwards and this is the problem with islam right um it will find its way into government and right now turkey is going backwards really fast and a lot of sec atheists and secularists in athe in turkey are sad and afraid to see which di the direction the country is going in, right? And I know there's so many atheists in Turkey. There's so many, not just atheists, there's so many atheist activists in Turkey. Um, atheists has a lot of people passionately trying to fight for secularism fight, fight, and fighting for uh, atheism there. And this is, um, I mean, I don't, this, is, this seems to be just like rhetoric for now, um, or, or is there? Yeah, yeah absolutely. For, I mean, like there's no talk of, of making atheism illegal or anything like that uh, right but, now. This is just this is just a lot of the older conservatives becoming uh, scared, I guess, uh, and and pushing down on their their Islamic ideology and um, you know making TV shows and, and you know, talking about it more in public, saying saying things like deism is terrible um, and that it corrupts minds and. Uh, you know. So, um, but they're calling it the deism plague. By the way, let's look. By the way, let's look at uh, the silver lining. That the fact that they think deism or and atheism are a, are a huge problem. This also might be a sign of the fact that they're noticing how much this is growing. Right? It used to be Muslims used to see Christianity as their main ideological um, comp competition. And more and more, they're realizing that it's not Christianity; it's atheism or lack of religion that they are um, that they need to fear, right? Um, right? And the reason why Egypt is making atheism illegal is because atheism is rising in Egypt. The reason why Turkey Turkey is seeing this as a threat is because atheism is rising in Turkey. And I think Matt actually is pointing that out in the comment section. Is saying, sounds more like the youth of Turkey have finally found a cure for the plague of religion. Well, they have, they, it's been, uh, I mean, Turkey, the youth of Turkey have been doing this for a long time right now, but I think it's growing faster than ever. Um, and Dina is also pointing out, getting alarmed, question mark. Have they been asleep the last decade? <laughs> yes. As, yeah, so a lot of people are pointing out that this 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 is probably an indication that atheism is growing. Uh, B just saying, I think most of uh, Middle East and African countries have a lot of young people. Yeah, and I think uh, access to social media and access to podcasts like ours, um, like the Secular Jihadists, um, is is the reason why um, you know the, the the internet is making religion this is why we do what we do and i think and a lot of other people do what they do and i think it it, it is um having an effect um i am in it is uh, so, um so we have someone speaking in the facebook chat as well adam jones uh he says great to see muslim friends converting to atheism deism or agnosticism yeah. uh the backlash is expected they need our support for publicity yes deconverting i think some people whenever uh, deconverting to atheism because a lot of people say everybody is born an atheist um oh yes yeah yes. um so somebody from South Africa, how do you pronounce this name? Sunshine. Savannah. Savannah. Yeah. Uh, um, why is there a Z there if it's Savannah? Uh, mm -hmm. I am in Africa. Uh, yes, lots of young people. Yeah. Um, all right. Savannah, can you tell us if we're saying your name right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so next one. Sunny. Sunny. Uh, we'll sunny. start calling her Sunny. sunny. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, this one. I saw this one. I was waiting for us to cover this. Go. Oh, our next news article? Yes, yeah. I'm so excited. So. Um, oh, wait, did the... I read the comments? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the Southern Poverty Law Center um, had Majid Nawaz, did Majid. I mispronounce? Majid Nawaz and Ayan Hirsi Ali, uh, both of them they had labeled as anti-Muslim extremists. Yeah. Um, and it's been that way for quite some time, but recently they finally removed those two um, from, from that list of hate, of their hate group. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is big news. I know that Mijad was going to be suing the Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, and I'm not sure if now, if he still will be, I mean, well, I think he should, that. because the thing is that, um, the damage that they caused during this time didn't go away, right? Maybe they stopped the damage from continuing, but they, you know what I mean? So what during that time where his name was on the list or for example even if you remove somebody from the list you could still you, you could still constantly say that the the person used to be on um you know a, 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 on a list of extremes by the way let's just be, let's just give it a, a um summary of this before we before we comment on it so so SBLC um is a is a law is a law organization what is it uh, but it's famous for so it stands for southern poverty law center yes yeah, so it's law center right i didn't know if it's called, called mm -hmm. law uh, organization but 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 they're famous for putting do you see you hear the alarm in my background or is my microphone i do oh. yeah I hear it. <laughs> sorry about that it's gonna go away hopefully so um so the the they you they they have they're they they used to have a lot of credibility for finding you know for going after hate crimes or you know putting people on a watch list hate groups hate yeah. groups and they used to put Nazis and white supremacists and if you were on their list then people recognize that okay this guy is on this list this is a credible list these people are you know hate mongers and racists and are da have dangerous viewpoints, right? Um, which was, you know, but now they went after people like Ayan Irsi Ali and Majid Nawaz, right? And they call them anti-Muslim extremists. And, you know, anybody that knows Majid uh, or Ayan knows that they are not anti-Muslim extremists. They are, they criticize, Ayan at least criticizes Islam. Uh, Majid is a reformist Muslim. I have my disagreements with uh, Majid, but he's definitely not an anti-Muslim extremist. Uh, right. I actually supported, I, I actually donated to his campaign against uh, SPLC because if he, if he wins this uh, law, if he wins this, it's good for all of us uh, because this is, you can't, you know, I mean, a lot of people say, a lot of people criticize him. Uh, to say, well, aren't you for free speech? So why can't they put you on it? Why can't you call you an extremist? Um, uh, if you're for free speech, are you only for free speech when it's a speech that you agree with? Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you free speech means that you get to say whatever you get to say and you ha you the consequences and you have to live with the consequences of what you say right free speech doesn't mean that you don't see the consequences of what of what you say free speech if, you know so if i call somebody a bigot and i'm called out for you know mislabeling somebody or or some saying something that is not true I'm like, oh, wait, why are you, are you guys against free speech? I thought, why can I say what I want? Yeah, you can say what you want and we're going to respond to it. Uh, and that's part of the consequence. When we say we're for free speech, that means you're not going to get jailed for what you say. You're not going to get executed for what you say. You're but not going to get the government. sort of consequence. Yeah, you're, right? you, you, there's not going to be any violence against you. You're going to get protected from violence against you 
because of what you said, but that doesn't mean that nobody's going to respond to what you're saying, right? That that's not the definition of free speech, right? That's a ridiculous right. standard, right? So and and I and just calling people extremists just for criticizing Islam and uh, being uh, grouped in hate, uh, hate speech, uh, being grouped uh, listed as in a extremist uh, list um is something by something that by organization that so many people uh, uh consider credible was dangerous for all of us for all of us that want to criticize islam so this fight that majid was fighting was important for him to is important for him to win because if he wins uh it sets a precedent and it also warns other people that want to just do something like this right um right so but this, the the thing is that removing his name they, they, I don't think they came out and apologized or anything, right? They just removed it. So they didn't explain why they removed it. So I think Majid's, uh, f- so we, I, I, I don't think we should let them go. They should be like, okay, so is Majid, so the fact that Majid and Ayan, the fact that you removed their name, does that mean they're not an extremist? Were they, did they used to be an extremist and now they stopped being extremists? Were they never an extremist? If they were never extremists, where are you, why, where's your fucking apology? And if you're never an extremist, um, then the lawsuit stands. You're proving the fact that the law, so you just gave a case, you, you proved your, the case against you, right? And right. If, if, if they were used, so I don't know, like if, and also, that could that could be the only thing that it means like because first of all if they're still an extremist why would you remove them right so you're right. either saying there used to be an extremist and now they're not which is ridiculous the only option that is left is that you made a mistake and if you made a mistake where's your fucking apology right and if you made a mistake the lawsuit just became a lot more stronger right and i think we should yeah. we should double down on this lawsuit yeah, well, on. I think that he should continue too because he says that his organization lost money when when he was put on this list of extremists right. with the Southern Poverty Law Center. He lost money, and I think that he should still go after. It. I mean, there or not, it doesn't matter. He should still go after them. Right. So, for example, let's say um, people say uh, Majid supports free speech unless it's against something he wants. Right. This is this is not just free speech. Okay. If I for, let's say, for, for example, Ali, you're you're almost getting hired by a company, right? And I'm jealous mm-hmm. of you that you're getting hired because I wanted that job, right? So I call the CEO and say, did you know Ali raped my child when I hired her for a, as a babysitter, <laughs> right? And they like, holy fuck, and they they don't hire you, and somebody else gets the job, right? Right. Then they then they find out that this you find out and you come after me and you want you sue me for damages if i say what happened to free speech i can say whatever i want yeah this is not free speech area anymore right this is you can't just you know you have the freedom to see that say that and now you have to pay the consequences for saying that all right so this is different right you you know right so if if majid could prove the actual financial damages to himself because of being on this list and his company then it makes total sense to go after the um, the uh, SPLC for the lock for this, and I hope that this damages their because even after this whole thing, I still see SPLC being uh, used as a source by many news organizations, right? By many different uh, like you know, a lot of different places when they uh, want to show that somebody is actually a bigot or racist. They mentioned that they're listed on SPLC, so they they're do, they're yeah. they're still very they're still considered very credible. I hope that this r- really hurts their credibility and for people to and I, and I think it should go beyond that. Once if this law becomes successful, every time CNN or Al Jazeera or whatever the wh- whoever BBC mentions SPLC as a credible source, I think people should go after these news organizations and tell them. What is this really the organization that you're using as a source? Uh, have you not seen right. that they, the, the, the fact that they lost a lawsuit to these people because they have mis- mislabeled somebody as an extremist? Um, so, so not only their credibility should be, be hurt, but 
other organizations that use them as a source, their credibility should also be hurt as well. Anyways, any anything in the uh, live chat? I'll also check the comments here on Facebook. I uh, so I saw earlier someone said Sam Harris was on it. Uh, I just went to the website. Sam Harris isn't on their list of extremists. Oh right, unless, I heard. Unless his organization I, is. Wait, I heard they removed Majid and I and they and they added Sam Harris. Is that is that is that real? I'm unable to find Sam Harris. No, I think it's on his Twitter. Uh, just check. Let me check tw Sam uh, Sam's Twitter. He mentioned it on his Twitter. Um, here, I'll go. Tell me, tell me if you what he's saying because I'm on the Southern Law Poverty or the Southern Poverty Law Center's website, and I'm actually looking through their list of extremists, unless his group is on here. No, um, search I, for his group. Where is this? There's a tweet here by Sam somewhere. Oh, yeah, there here it is. Here it is. Okay, look at this. Um, oh, people can't see the whole thing. I'm going to... How do I make... Here, I'll make this a little bit larger. Uh, I'll just read it. The, S uh, the SPLC removes Majid Nawaz from their hate watch page, but then adds me as a racist leader of the alt-right. Uh, we may have discovered a new law of nature, the, con uh, the conservation of stupidity. So, And then he links to an article... Uh, Wait, is this a... Re oh, yeah, it's on actually... It's on SPLC's uh, website itself. So... Let me, let me see if I could go to this other... No, I can't do that. Never mind. Um, yeah, anyways. So, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> Sam Harris is there. You know, it, by this rate, I, I think it, people should see this as like a badge of honor i want to be on sbs list right now wait does that <laughs> does, it, does i don't that, think so does that gonna make traveling harder because if if that's unless that's not, unless it doesn't mess with my travel then i kind of want to be on that list now um, you know what, i need to, I don't, i'm not sure if it would yeah i want to be on that list now How, what, what do i get to what do i have to do uh, uh, just I'll keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just don't have as big of a following yet to be noticed by them. Maybe one day <laughs> I'd be honored to be. Alex a... Jones, by the way, is on their list of extremists. Oh, just I don't know that. I don't know anymore if I want to be on the list. <laughs> so be careful with Jewish boys. Yeah. Okay. I have to think about it. <laughs> um. All right, so the next one is on Kansas. It's loading. Let me just close. Okay, yeah. yeah. Kansas militiamen guilty of a plot to bomb Somali's mosque. Um, so, yeah, there's these three men in Kansas, like in their late 40s, early 50s, um, who considered Muslims cockroaches. Um, and they planned to bomb their mosque and apartment complex where a lot of uh, Somali immigrants lived. Um, so they were infiltrated by the FBI. An FBI informant found out about their plan. Uh, they were arrested, and they were just recently uh, found guilty. Okay. who? Good job, FBI. Right? Right. We're stopping right? these things before it happens. Yeah. So these people want to bomb a mosque. What the yeah. fuck is wrong with people? Like that's what I mean, I just, I don't understand this. What is, what would that honestly accomplish? You will make his, it, help Islam grow faster if that's, you know. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just don't understand these, these fuckers, hate groups. These fuckers. Oh, like what do we have? Pro what's the, pro the, every problem that you have with Islam this basically, you guys are achieving it. Like, I mean, what were these guys? Were they were they like 
white supremacists or do they just hate Muslims or like do they yeah I mean I definitely think that it's it's because they hated Muslims I mean to call Muslims cockroaches what the fuck that's just um, I mean clearly this is a, a hateful motive um, because they are Muslims it just wanted... weird to me a lot of people that say like oh Islam is such a uh, bloodthirsty religion so let's just kill them okay you like you just became your you know your ideology is just worse right as as or the same as their ideology right as i don't know you know most here's the thing we m muslims uh as a whole as a group of people right are as good as every other group of people, right? Yeah. And when you criticize Islam, you're criticizing it because of the message itself being hateful, right? So, right. and because of the message itself being so, uh, and even though most Muslims don't follow it, you, st you, you still criticize it because the message is hateful, right? And then if you're criticizing Islam, you have to criticize these motherfuckers as well because they are they are just as vile and actually they're you know they're actually practicing it they're even more dangerous than than the, that ideology actually i don't know if they're more dangerous i don't want to say that because they're this is just three people and islam is influencing a whole bunch of people um well yeah, yeah i just want to add that the the U.S. attorney um, for the prosecution said their ultimate goal was to wake people up and to slaughter every man, woman, and child in the building. Holy fuck, these people are idiots. So wake people up to what? I no, just... wake people up as in, as in, make as people. As in, wake up, sheeple, you know how. Yeah. <laughs> crazy conspirators well, people... are always saying, wake up, wake up. No, but I these mean... people need to be... Here's the thing. Okay, a lot, I just want to be very clear about this. A lot of people might point out that focusing on this is... is A lot of people from the right will tell you that this is such a small thing, right? Compared to Islam, what Islam does, right? That you uh -huh. shouldn't be highlighting it. That you're, you're basically taking attention to away from the crimes of Islam and you're focusing on just three people that didn't even, weren't even successful to do anything, right? And versus thousands of people actually being killed by Islam uh, every, every single year, right? Um, yeah. Because of that ideology. The thing is that if you don't call this out, then it's hard to take you seriously when you call Islam out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like people, people will see, people will think that you have an agenda here and your agenda is not really to help humanity and make the world a more peaceful place. You just have a hatred for a certain group of people and that's why you're attacking Islam. Attacking Islam is an excuse for your hate for Muslims, right? But right. when you see something like this, call it out as, as, as the evil that it is. Even if it is a small fraction of the problem that you usually deal with, for two reasons. First of all, so so that you could show that you're you're against violence and brutality in where, no matter where the source is. And secondly, because fighting, if you want to, if you want to fight Islam as an ideology. The only way to do that is to get close to Muslims as, as, as their friends and allies, right? If you don't call this out, then they will be convinced that you are there after them because of who they are, not, not because you disagree with them, right? Right. You have to... You, if you want to fight Islam, so even if you think Islam is a much greater problem than this, for the sake of being able to fight Islam effectively, you need to befriend Muslims. Because you can't change people's minds 
by saying that oh let's bomb the Middle East or let's say oh these are all cockroaches you know people are not going to change up opinions like that you have to call you ha don't hold back on calling the bo ideology bullshit but to tell you, you have to you have to try to convince, you know, I know it's very difficult, you have to convince a lot of Muslims that calling their ideology bullshit is not a personal attack on them. And I know that's very difficult, but it's, it's possible. And you do that by coming to their defense against fuckers like these, right? And you yeah. highlight the fact that you are against fuckers like these. Not just this, a lot more milder than this. Like if people want to come after their rights, if people want to discriminate against them, if people just want to say something bigoted against them, right? You Even in those cases, you will come to their defense to show that you're there to challenge their ideas, but you're not there to challenge their rights. And in fact, you will stand with them against anybody that wants to challenge their rights. I let think it, that's a that is such a powerful point. That let you just alone, made, let alone their lives. Yeah, but go yeah. on. Sorry. No, that's that's. Just, I think that more people need to hear that message. More people need to understand that, um, you know, if you're truly criticizing Islam because you disagree with the ideology, you should you should stand by Muslims. You should be friends with Muslims. Not only that, but uh, friending Muslims helps you learn. It educates you more about the ideology that you're trying to fight. Um, you know, being being an American uh, Texan, even uh, who grew up with Christianity and, and Judaism all around me, uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't as aware of Islam. Uh, and now I do. I, I do everything I can when I am able to to be the voice of an ex-Muslim uh, who was robbed of their own. And and in order to do that, I've actually learned a lot from Muslims that I've friended um, on social media, and we have discussions, and we have talks, and I think that that is such a powerful uh, point, Armin, is that we do need to call out the bullshit against people. It's, it's love the people, not the belief, right? Um, and if, if that's truly your, your motive, then yeah, we do need to be calling this out more. Right. Even, even if you think that it's such... This is very a small fraction like a fraction of the numbers that you see on the other side right you still mm -hmm. I, even if it's a small thing that's why i think it's it's important that you call it out um and you know the reason why some people might not call it out is because they might say well uh, why would we even need to say this of course we're against murderers like do i really what else do i need to list hey fish i'm officially announcing that i guess i'm against child rapists i'm against killing people like these, <laughs> right but the thing is that you might think that it's supposed to be obvious but unfortunately it's it's not uh, it, we, i do see a lot of comments uh from people that just bomb the whole fucking middle east uh, right. you know, like just let them let just let them kill each other. Uh, you know, th those comments are are there's a lot of them out there, right? So you might think like, why would so I need many. to why would I need to denounce this? This is obviously <laughs> like really do I really need to say that murdering people because of their beliefs is bad? Um, and unfortunately, yes, I, I guess it's not it's not that obvious to people that what where your positions are because there's so many people that. Um, are okay with people dying because they're Muslim. It's it's common. Yeah. It's, it's 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 unfortunately common. So when you get a chance to announce it, do announce it. Um, and especially in a case like this, when nobody actually died, nobody died here, right? Right. No, nobody so died nobody here. Died, yeah. These, so these men can't... are facing life in prison, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. They That's haven't good. been sentenced yet. But... That's good. So thankfully, there's a good there's a good chance that they won't get to hurt anybody. Right, and 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 here's another thing: whoever thinks that these people deserve to die, I'm against that as well, right? I'm I'm happy yeah. with the life sentence for all three of them. Um, and and I I don't think eye for an eye or anything like that it makes any sense. But let's see, Russell, are we labeling them domestic terrorists or are they? Uh, wrong skin tone for that um, the wrong skin tone for that okay these people are terrorists 
but I think that's what 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 I think they are terrorists. But I think what Russell is referring to is you know when the LA shooting, but no, um, the Las no, no, no Las Vegas shooting that happened, right? Uh-huh. And, and that person was not called a terrorist, even though it was, it was a mass shooting. And a lot of people, right, but a lot of people a think lot of it people was. Don't understand. Yeah, a lot Sorry. of people don't understand that he was not a terrorist because we didn't know his motivation. It had nothing to do with his skin color. Terrorism is not is not you know is not based on the number of pe- people that die. It's not based on how big of a deal something is. You could something could be a terrorist act even if nobody dies. Something could be not yeah. a terrorist act even if 500 people die. If your motivations are you you just you just hate the world, that's not a terrorist act. If your motivations are sending a message, making a political point, then I think that's that's a that's a def, right by definition that's a terrorist act, right? So I think this Absolutely. would so I think these this would uh, qualify as a terrorist act, wouldn't it? Yeah, because they said they want to wake up wake wake up wake people up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. So I guess people... this is a terrorist. But that. somebody that is more of an expert on terrorism, please tell us if this is an act of terror. But I, I, I really don't think people people understand that a lot of times when they see somebody that is white, is not uh, not uh, categorized as a terrorist. They're like, oh, so racist. If this was a brown guy, would that definitely be called? And it comes up every time, Armin. Even that uh, kid who did the school shooting in Florida. Uh, that was all over social. Why aren't we calling him a terrorist? Why don't we? I mean, he killed people because he was bullied. It, it had nothing to do yeah, with his that's not, political agenda. If if uh, while he was shooting people, if at one point he shouted "white power" or something like that, then okay, terrorist act, right? Boom, Boom terrorist yep. act. Like if, no, if, if we don't know if it's a if we're like, oh, I'm bullied, I'm going to take revenge. Not a terrorist act. Doesn't matter if you're brown or white or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, and the re- and terror making something t- uh, labeled as terrorism does not mean it's worse or less of an issue. It's just it gets treated differently because now there's a message that is being sent out. Anyways, right. Tim Tim is responding actually. Um, oh, actually, Tim is responding to Russell. Uh, they are terrorists by legal definition. The problem comes with people not actually following the definition and just saying X is terrorism, so call them a terrorist when it doesn't work that way. Okay, yeah, t- uh, Tim has a good point. Uh, any other comments here? Rob is saying, top tip, American cops save time by simply rounding up American white men with weird, um, starey eyes and questionable facial hair. Oh, because I think this is just a joke. This is not a racist remark because these people have it's just making fun of their looks. I don't know if this is racist. I think it's just a joke. Chris is saying they look as they look as if they're combined IQ. Okay, people are just making funny about how they look in the picture. Uh, oh, look, they're all white. Hmm. And Aiden, Aiden is saying, look, they're all white. So, and so, and we're reporting that. I don't understand. So imagine if this comment was like, "Oh, look, they're all Middle Eastern." This would be. Yeah, much... I don't. Is this? Do you guys think this is a racist comment? Aiden is saying, "Oh, look, they're all white." Let's see what responses it got. Uh, I like to say I'm surprised by seemingly overwhelming, overwhelming amount of white domestic ter- uh, terrorists. Makes sense, kind of. I kind of expected it would be so. Uh, I would be surprised if we went a year without this. So Aiden is saying that white people are more likely to commit domestic terrorism. That's a very strange remark because there's more white people than any other races in the United States, isn't there? Yeah. So obviously yeah, you're gonna yeah. see more whites. Anything? <laughs> I think that's yeah. I think that's kind of racist, isn't it? Yeah, that is. I, I think it's. I think it's very ignorant <laughs> all it's the way true. around. Um, oh, Jeff is saying skin color protects them from being labeled terrorist. That's what Jeff is saying. Really, Jeff? Okay, if we, if they got they're getting life in prison, I I don't know what the labeling how what the labeling is going to protect them from. 
Uh, my goodness, people. Adam is saying this is not a militia, this is a gang of criminals. What's the difference? Uh, any comments on YouTube or Facebook we need to read? Uh, not Facebook. What about YouTube? Uh, um, I love our YouTube chat because everyone, everyone gets into good conversations here. Yeah. Evidence they were white supremacists? I don't, we don't know, Brian. We didn't say they were, they were assholes, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I think that he's asking somebody else. B is saying, um, saying they are all white is okay, considering they want an all white country. Oh, so if, uh, apparently B knows something about them that they're not. So if they are, if they were white supremacists, then I'm mentioning that they're all white. I mean, how could you be not be white if you're a white supremacist? Um, anyways, let's go to the next news. Yeah, the next news. So I was uh, reading our YouTube comments and seeing that we have a few Texas. Oh, let's people, say, okay. So, uh, so let me let's be clear. So you you got this from the comments in the last YouTube video? No, 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 oh. no, no, no. I'm just saying that I see that we have a lot of Texans uh, with us right now. Okay. We were talking about Texas earlier. Um, so. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that uh, Texas passed a law saying that all fetal remains had to be buried or cremated. Um, and that law was blocked by a federal judge um, earlier this year, just days before it was supposed to go into effect. Um, so, yeah, the problem is, is that there are still hospitals that require this. And uh, this actually told a story about a woman in Texas who had to sign a piece of paper when the doctor realized that her 11-week-old baby didn't have a heartbeat anymore. Uh, she went to a Catholic hospital in Texas where um, they gave her two options, that Seton said that they would bury the baby in a shared grave or that the mother could arrange for a private burial at her own expense. And this is for, you know, an 11-week-old baby that uh, didn't have a heartbeat anymore. She is being forced to bury it herself or know that her baby was thrown into a mass grave. Um, I think it's pretty fucked up. And, and I see that some of you guys are talking about being uh, 30 minutes away from Austin and you're near Austin. Seton Medical Center in Austin is the hospital they're talking about. And they've had this policy up for more than a decade. Um, this is okay. Rachel in uh, top comment on Facebook is saying that the dumb fuckery is on steroids. How far past uh, a late period do you start having to bury the uh, menis, um, menstrual, oh, pads. menstrual pads? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You know, it's really strange that this group of cells for them matters more than i mean i could turn we could turn my skin cells into a baby if we wanted to right you can't right. turn not blood cells because they're missing the uh, nu uh the nucleus right but every almost any other s s cell that i have you could so what is it so special about these cells that they like they ha they're theologically different there's some magic in them that these other cells don't have that the basically what you're isn't this this argument okay there are some cells that they have they have this enchantments on it that when you have to bury it you have to dig a hole and get rid of it rather than anything else is that basically the argument right it, yeah you know i mean if these things so, so wait so if the mother if the what are they saying that you have to do with it? They have to put it in. So they they're they're in Seton, the Seton Medical Center in Austin. Right. Uh, they they take they scrape. You know they have to do like a DNC. So they have to remove everything that was in your uterus to avoid you getting an infection. Right. Um, and then they take those remains and they put it in a mass grave, or you can choose to. Uh, provide a private burial for it yourself. But you have to do a burial. You have to bury it. Um, and and the state of Texas is trying to make that uh, 
universal, um, well not universal in Texas, uh, that anyone, any woman who has an abortion or miscarriage has those options as well. And they, they actually voted that into law. Um, Does that, this was passed. So when you say fetal remain, that means like all the liquid around it and all the walls and everything as well, right? Not uh, just yeah. the baby. Not just the baby, just so, everything. Yeah. So the, with it. anything, any cells around there has like magical, spiritual stuff on it that, that has <sighs> to go underground. You know, if you know, if 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 this religion wasn't a thing, right? This would sound like so nutty. I mean, it sounds nutty to us, but uh, if for people that are they think that this is makes sense like you have to think about it if this wasn't the norm it just sounds so weird like these set of tissues here there they there's they they have some there's something about them there's something magical about them that sets them apart from all your so if i if you like for example uh take your skin off and you don't have to bury it right but these walls yeah. here they need to be these these skins here they need to they need to be underground for because what because there's like because magic i you know it's just it's just bizarre like th this is biology and theology getting mixed is makes it so strange to me because it seems like what the fuck are you doing even here you have no business in in like you know you're talking about s cells and some cells being more significant than other cells you know this is how ridiculous it gets that when when you try to apply theology to distinguishing between different different cells i don't know yeah um beige brought up a good point that 25 percent of fertilized eggs do not adhere to the womb so we should mourn every period uh I mean, right. yeah and in, in the state of texas we should we should cry we should uh bury tampons with little <laughs> headstones i don't know it's crazy it's insane I mean, but the take, but every cell has a potential to become a, you know. So, every cell has a potential to become a few human a human being. Every cell you can clone it, um, you know. Every, even sperm cells. People are like, oh, sp sperm cells. If you don't, if they don't meet an egg, you can't. A, they're not gonna. Be, you, you're not supposed to. Uh, moan every uh, like have a ceremony for every masturbation you say people say oh masturbation is um, mass murder then and uh, every blow job is cannibalism and people are like no because those are just sperms uh, and they can't become human uh, like yes they can you're just not trying hard enough uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could turn every sperm cell you could you just need another set of you need to just double the chromosomes and then start cloning it like if you have the right conditions you could make it happen so you just you're just not trying hard enough every, you have to save every fucking cell every time you're itching your butt anywhere you're you're committing mass murders because every cell that you're killing that is being rubbed rubbed off your skin every single one of those cells has a potential of becoming a few f full human being uh yeah yeah so uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a holocaust every time you scratch yourself go on sorry <laughs> it's okay freelance opportunist is saying that um he doesn't know if it's strictly religious uh to bury the dead well the thing is is you know you can take that tissue that you miscarry or abort and you can donate it to science you can you don't have to uh have funerals for tissue that did, that wasn't viable um you know i i don't i don't agree with you there what what what's the point again uh did just that you know it's it's good to bury the dead it was i believe the point that he was trying to Why? make um who's saying that and you just you can freelance mm. and it's in our youtube chat oh, okay let me see let freelance me see. Opportunity. i'm just saying i don't know that it's strictly religious to bury the dead it is strictly religious um, it's not the most cost effective way of doing it. It's not the most, I mean, there's so many, uh, so much land being dedicated to it. Right. Um, I think, I don't know what, what uh, there's, you know, you could donate it to the research. I think that's the better thing to do. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely the better thing to do. Not just fucking bury it because it came out of you. I, don't uh, freelance know. Is saying, <laughs> I think it's really weird. Freelance is saying, okay, I didn't hear the whole conversation. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, I, I don't, and people say, yeah, actually saying, oh, it came out of you, makes it more special. Well, taking a shit, that also comes out of you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Um, all right. So what else people are saying? It's, just, it's so weird that this is becoming a law. Like, this is, um, yeah, free, freedom from religion should get it. And, you know, a lot of times they try to disguise stuff that are based on religion they try to make sense of it to oh, because yeah. they know that be, making it religious is not going to fly legally. But if you look at it, you see that they really don't have any arguments uh, for it other than under the fact that it's religion. Like the, a lot of anti-abortion apologists try to come up with non-religious uh, reasons for why this is this should be the case but the underlying cause is uh, religious they just don't they just can't they know that they can't make those arguments in uh, to pass laws um yeah. all right so what we need to do is we need to get greg abbott out of office that's that's what needs to happen he's the, he's the guy who is just so excited about this burial yeah. bill and we just need to get him gone right go vote people all right. So, when is that happening? Actually, when can people take him out of office? Um, I know. I, I actually don't know exactly when. All right. Look uh, out for that, that though. So, anyways. Yeah. So, next one. Oh, I heard this one. Yes. So, Pope Francis. Uh, the article says Pope Francis lied to a child about whether his dead atheist father was in heaven. Uh, for you, those of you who don't know what happened, this little boy named Emmanuel stepped up to a microphone during a question and answer session being held by the Pope, um, but he started crying, so the Pope let him walk up to himself. Emmanuel walked up to the Pope and started whispering in the Pope's ear. Uh, what he revealed to the Pope was that his father was an atheist and recently died, um, and he wanted, to know, um, he wanted to know if his dad was in heaven. So... The Pope has a little talk with him. The boy goes and, and, and sits right after down. he was crying, I saw the video. It was so sad. The kid was crying. It was so sad. Wasn't yeah. he a cute kid? Because oh, his father so just died, and he's wondering. I think his main. He's saying if my father is in heaven, but I think the real question is if my father is burning in hell right now, right? Um, this was my greatest fear when I was religious, a religious kid as well. I I, re I very much relate to this kid. I kept on imagining my parents burning in hell. This is, um, but yeah, so go on. So what happened? What did the Pope did? So, yeah, the Pope, you know, talks to him, sends the boy to sit down, and then uh, he starts talking to the crowd about what the boy had said to him. And he says to the crowd, what do you think? A father's heart. God has a dad's heart. And with a dad who was not a believer, who baptized his children and gave them, um, that do you think God would be able to leave him far from himself? Uh, does God abandon his children, the Pope asked. Does God abandon his children when they are good? The children shouted, no. So the Pope says, there, Emmanuel, that is your answer. God surely was proud of your father because it is easier as a believer to baptize your children than to baptize them when you are not a believer. Surely this pleased God very much. Okay, so... So the Pope... Yeah, go on. Yeah, sorry. No, go on. Oh, uh, you, you, you say, you say. <laughs> So this is this. There's a whole lot to unpack here. Okay, I think uh, is is the Vatican freaking out because of this? Because the Pope just publicly said an atheist went to heaven. But did he really? He did. Did he? he did he really though? If you if you look at if you look at what he said, all he really said was, God wasn't going to abandon this guy. That doesn't necessarily no, say he said, that he said he God would want to keep him close to himself, right? And people, when the people say that heaven is close, with, is closest to God, and hell is being away from God, I mean, come on, he said that. He basically said, <laughs> he basically. But what else was he supposed to tell that cute kid? I, I would have told that cute kid anything. I want to be course, honest with you. Of <laughs> course, but what? What would you? What would the Catholic? church the vatican look at this all these other people that are looking at thousands of years worth worth of uh doctrine and uh you know dogma being set in Hopefully. stone and all of a sudden this yeah. guy comes like yeah he, he, your dad was an atheist and didn't accept <laughs> jesus as lord and savior and he's in fucking heaven like this is this undermines the 
everything <laughs> that Christianity is for. <laughs> this Emmanuel kid just basically undermined the whole Catholic doctrine. Everything Did just fell know? apart. But here, remember, Pope said something last. A few, I think last year or two years ago, that a lot of people thought that he said that atheists can go to heaven, and he did not say that at that point. He said if everybody could get redemption, and a lot of we even, actually even talked atheists, about that on one of our episodes. Yeah, even atheists, yeah. and a lot of people said, "Oh, the Pope said atheists could go to heaven," but no, he said redemption, not salvation. These are two different things in Catholic doctrine, right? So redemption yeah. doesn't mean they're going to go to heaven. Um, and the Catholic Church, a lot of people in the Catholic Church came out and like, hey, calm down. Of course, the Pope is not going to come contradict Catholic doctrine. He said redemption. This, is, this has always been the Church's position because Christ came to redeem everybody, but only the people that believe Jesus will become get salvation. Uh, this is nothing new. He didn't say anything new. And no, atheists are not going to go to heaven. And he did not say that. But now, he didn't technically spell it out, but he basically said it. He's a, he, <laughs> said, he said, God's heart is like a father. Do you think he's going to... And to be honest, he didn't say all atheists are going to go to heaven. He said, no. your father is going to go to heaven because he baptized his children. So, and he said that it's harder to baptize your children as an atheist than it is as a Christian. So your God did something even more profound and meaningful because even though he didn't believe his God, he still baptized his children, which is harder to do than a Christian does. So that's why he goes, he go, he's going to go to heaven. So if I'm ever, if I ever have a child, I'm not planning on baptizing my children. So, Am I gonna go to hell? What about all the other? What about all the other atheists that didn't baptize? I have children? one child that's been baptized. Uh, <laughs> does that get me like a little bit closer to heaven? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what about the Hindus? <laughs> what about the one billion plus Hindus? They're not. I mean, they're not baptizing their children. Well, I mean, they're doing something similar, but not not the Catholic baptism. Uh, some of them, at least. But I mean, what about the Muslims? Right. Um, we want clarification on this, Mr. Pooh. I mean, the fact that we even asking you this is, is ridiculous. First of all, I hope this makes a lot of Christians think, both the ones that agree with this and the ones that don't. First of all, this is going to make a whole bunch of Catholics go, what the fuck just happened, right? Because they're yeah. going to see that they, 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 a lot of Catholics that really, their doctrine is that... No, this is this goes against everything they believe in, but also part of a fundamental part of their belief is that their pope is infallible. So there's a huge contradiction here that I don't know how they're going to resolve. I think they're going to try to dance around it that he didn't technically say. Do you think the pope was being clever by making the crowd answer the question instead of himself? Do you think that's what he was trying to do? I think so. I think so. Like he let the crowd kind of but answer. He was he nodding, but questions. he was nodding. To, he was like, "There, there's your answer." So he was like, "Do you think he asked the crowd? Do you think a father will abandon his child?" Uh, and the crowd was like, "And the crowd was like, didn't know how to answer." Right? The crowd was quiet. And he was like, "Don't be." And he said, "Don't be afraid to answer." And the crowd said, "No." And then like, "There you go, Emmanuel. There's your answer." So, like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you think that's a trick? Um, I mean, I mean, he was put in a know. tough position, to be fair to him, right? Because he can't go To be against... fair to him. <laughs> and, I mean, I think any good person would have lied to that little boy at that moment. I yeah, don't... But this shows how fucking, <laughs> how fucking insane the Christian doctrine is, right? I think a lot of yeah. Christians should think, like, this, this, his, this kid's father was a good father. And my religion teaches me that he burns in hell, right? This is why my religion teaches me, right? And, and even if you think, okay, maybe it doesn't. The fact that this has been a question in your religion, and this is an obvious, mor this is an obvious moral answer to anybody that hasn't ascribed to your religion, to anybody that doesn't follow this ridiculous ideology, 
this has been an obvious answer that no, somebody doesn't deserve to be to be burned. Not even yeah. for not forever, not for thousands of years, not even for five fucking minutes, not if not even for a second, because they disagreed with you on something, because they didn't believe in your ideology. And you are yeah. now the fact that you're even debating that shows how fucking backwards and re your religion is. You you some some people now want a clap for 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 people for us to clap for this pope, right? Okay, and people are like look, yeah. this is this guy is going against these doctrines. This guy is tolerant. Really, we should clap for the idea that somebody doesn't deserve to burn because he disagrees with you because he doesn't believe in your Jesus. That's how far we have come. That this is progress. This is what we consider progress. Don't somebody doesn't deserve to be tortured for not agreeing with us. Well, I think that uh, Hemet Mehta said something just fantastic in this article. He said the boy's father, according to the Catholic faith, is now in hell. That's why the kid was freaking out in the first place. Right. Ever since his father died, he's been under the assumption daddy's getting tortured. That's what Catholicism did to him. So in the in the first place. They, they fucked this kid up. Right. Because had his and dad And not just gotten... this kid. This kid is the voice of thousands. Thousands. thousands of other Absolutely. kids thro throughout history that have went through trauma. And mothers that went through trauma for their children dying. And fathers. And brothers. And sisters. And lovers. Of thinking that the person that they love the dearest is now being tortured. Okay? Yeah. And this is this is just one kid. It's not this kid is not alone. It's this has been happening for thousands of years. This is the cost of religion that people don't think about. When we, whenever you talk about cost of religion, people think about bombs exploding and you know wars and uh, this is this trauma. You know? Think about it. Would you would you prefer dying or seeing your loved one being tortured in front of you? Most people most people that I know of would consider prefer dying, right? So if you think about yeah. death and people f people actually thinking that their loved ones is being tortured, and right how many people throughout history went through this? Anyways, go on. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, you you didn't. I I you made a great point. Brian is saying, top comment is saying, this is the kind of stuff that gives us atheists a bad name. Pointing out conflicting religious actions or texts uh, when someone did something genuinely nice for someone. No wonder people hate us. Brian, I think your standard for what's nice is very low. Of yeah. course, anybody, <laughs> anybody that is even remotely not a fucking psycho like not evil would not tell a kid that yeah I get, hey look, hey emmanuel yeah your father is being roasted that's what you get for not accepting jesus you little fuck like anything yeah. right anybody like you better yeah okay so if i told emmanuel yes your father is being roasted alive first of all if you believe in actually if you believe in your doctrine that that would be the moral thing to do is to yeah, tell emmanuel if if hell is real, if hell is real, and if you go to hell for not believing in Jesus, if that was the premise, and if that's the truth, and if you believe that, the morally co correct thing to do would be to tell Emmanuel that, yes, your father is burning alive right now, and try avoid going there yourself. Because the morally right thing to do would be to say, at least not to say, to scare Emmanuel enough not to, for him to end up there. And this is what's fucked up about the religion is that if the Pope's religion is actually true, he didn't do the moral thing. Right? The moral thing would be to yeah. warn him and remind him that did what happened to his father. Because at least you would stop him from burning in hell forever. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
the problem with religion the problem with religion is not the f- is not the fact that some people take it seriously the problem with religion is that if you take the premises seriously the fundamentalists are the ones that are taking it to its logical conclusions um Sid O'Neill is responding to the Andreas comment saying what is nice is that he, the Pope gave the kids some rest over the subject. You're welcome. I mean, I, mean, I the Pope might be a genuinely nice guy, but it's strange to me that this is the standard that we have for niceness. Right. A- Absolutely. Andrew is saying, I was raised a Roman Catholic, despite not believing any of it for even a split second. Okay. That, that was the dot there. I, I, uh, I'm no fan of religion and certainly no fan of the Pope. And I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm as an atheist. Okay, this is written badly. I'm not reading it badly. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I as an, I think he meant to say, I as an atheist. I'm, I am as, a, oh, no, it's written correctly. I'm as atheist as it gets, but under the circumstances, the ma- uh, he made the right call. Yeah, he did make the right call. It's the call that you would make uh, if you're a decent guy, unless you actually believe in your doctrine. Maybe the Pope doesn't believe in his doctrine. I hope that's the case. Uh, Maybe he's an atheist, secret atheist, but he's trying to make changes from within. Uh, That wasn't the place. I just think he's a really good PR PR director. (laughs) That's all he is. I don't know. I really don't know. And I can't read minds. Uh, that wasn't the place to upset a grieving child, yep, by telling him uh, the letter of the Catholic law, law. Imagine if he told the kid his dad was, according to Catholicism, burning in hell. Sometimes, well, but, but Andrew, would, if, wouldn't, if... That's what it, he taught the kid before his dad died. Yeah, That's but, what Catholicism it, the kid isn't, spread is, isn't the fact that you're spreading this religion responsible for this kid being traumatized anyways, right? Isn't, isn't the Pope spreading cat, uh, the Catholic doctrine around the world make, going to make a lot of more kids think like this? And the, a lot of kids that don't get the opportunity to come in front of the mic and tell this to the Pope, right? Um. The more irresponsible thing to do, I think, above everything, is like, is, is this to tell the kid that you know this is all just nonsense. This is fiction. There's no proof for hell. Uh, your in, your dad was a great dad, and you were lucky to have him, and he's not being tortured right now. And stop taking fairy tales seriously. They're just made up. Um, yeah, but. Let me see. And also, would another another question for Andrew is, if if Andrew, if you believed in hell, if you think if you thought hell was real, would the morally correct thing be to stop making a kid upset? Because wouldn't this kid getting upset over the fact that his father in hell is in hell be less of an issue compared to he himself being in hell? If I believed in hell. I would take the the lesser of two evils. If I actually believe that hell was real, one of them would be, okay, I'm going to now tell this kid that his father is in hell and that's going to be very bad for this kid because he's going to make he's going to make him really be really upset about uh him father burning, right? But the worst case scenario is that this kid is going to, well, my father was an atheist and so he's not in hell. So Maybe I should take give atheism a shot when he gets older, and I have to avoid that because that's the greater evil. So if I believe in hell, I would make that kid very upset. I would make that kid panic. I would make that kid panic. I would make that kid cry out loud from you know from uh, you know. So like, good thing I'm not religious. I would be an asshole. <laughs> right? um, but yeah. But that would be the morally correct thing to do because I would really want that kid not to go to hell. That would be the higher priority for me than, than the fact that he's going to be upset over his father. 
Um, yeah. there, let me see. People, uh, every soul that goes to hell should be a reminder that God has failed. <laughs> yeah, actually, you're right. Because if, as a father, if your kid fails, you, they hold you responsible for why, f why is God not blaming himself for the ones that are going to hell? Anyways, let's go to the next. Do you have anything to read in the live chat? Uh, not on Facebook or in the group. All right. Um, let's go uh, to the next we have one. to we have to get through these last three pretty quickly. All right, let's go. We have a thing. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Um, so this next one is about uh, buying Facebook likes is now against Islamic law, but child marriage still isn't. So in Egypt, uh, a Muslim legal expert issued a fatwa um, saying that no one can pay for Facebook likes anymore due to it being fraud and deception. Is, shouldn't there already be a fatwa against fraud and deception? Yeah, so... <laughs> I, mean, oh I, don't, I don't understand why specifically having to call out paying for Facebook likes. And, and, yeah, like, fatwas who, against fatwas. I, Are you going? Yeah, right? I don't understand. Like, uh, what exactly they're talking about paying for Facebook likes? Are they talking about, like, Facebook ads? Wait. Or... Like say a, a one oh one is saying I'm watching this for hours just to see your opinion in my comment at the crying kid. Wait, oh we didn't we missed out A one oh one, what did we did we miss out reading your comment? Ooh. Let's make sure that uh, guys if you wanna make sure that we read your comments in the live chat, please um tag Atheist Republic, okay? Uh all right, go on Ellie. Uh, yeah, so I mean, what what exactly are they talking about? I know that um, they're saying that people regularly go to talk about uh, matters related to even the most trivial issues, um, and then fatwas get handed out about that. But what is does anyone know what they're talking about on paying someone to click like on a promotion? Are they talking about Facebook ads? No, no, no. I think they're talking about off? when you go buy fa uh, ads from um, like other places where people give you bot likes, you know, like it's, I guess it's, you don't need, you know, it's already in Facebook community standards. You don't need to, I think, you know, yeah. how, how about you just make the Facebook community standards your fatwa? Like, hey, Facebook community standards is or Islamic law from now on. How about that? Uh, but I thought there was already yeah. a fatwa against Facebook itself. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know now. I think, um, yeah. Fa yeah. Maybe Mark, Mark Zuckerberg should talk to muftis and go get them to... Uh, that would be very, you know, make a lot of... Actually, there was a fatwa just recently by Khamenei tell, telling people, tell, saying that uh, checking um, people's private messages on social media is against, is un-Islamic. But he's doing that because he's trying to promote, he's, he's making a move against Telegram, which is a common um, social media app used in Iran. And they were trying to make it their internal Iranian made social media popular, but a lot of Iranians are afraid that if they use that, the government is going to see what they're saying. So he tried to make make a fatwa against that. But there might be actually a political reason behind this fatwa as well. Maybe this guy's like Facebook page is not growing as fast as his competitors, and he's he's guessing that they're buying likes instead of actually earning them. So he's just putting a fatwa against it. I don't know. But there must be more to the story. Let me see some of the comments. And then God spoke, thou shall not likes on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so. No, but this is, is this is what Islam, Islam is actually, uh, both the Shia and Sunni version of it is so all-encompassing. Like, it's not about, a lot of people ask me if Islam is political or not. And like, Islam is about every possible thing you can think of, right? Uh, of course, it's going to be political. Islam has fatwas against how you take a dump, how you sleep, <laughs> how you how you wash your hair. There's there's nothing in Islam that is out of its domain, right? So that is is right. is political, economical, biological. It's everything. It's it don't it has it's supposed to dominate all aspects of your life. There is nothing that Islam 
doesn't have a comment on and if there is and if they found it they will have a comment on it. they will make a fatwa on it soon there is fatwas on what to do for if you're a Muslim and you're in Mars, which direction you should supposed to pray to. <laughs> there is like they're like, how am I supposed to? Pray? How which direction do I pray to if if I if I'm on Mars, Mac? I'm on like an Earth. You know which Mac, which direction Mecca is, right? But how how yeah. am I supposed to pray if I'm on Mars, right? So they have fatwas for Muslims on space. Um. Anyways, let's go. Wow. Yeah. Uh, do you want to read one. some of the comments? I read, I read one of them. Or do you? Yeah, because we're okay. running out of time, and also nature is calling. So let's do. Wait, let's okay, do. yeah, uh, right to ride. Saudi women are now allowed to use bicycles. So um, we've woo. been discussing throughout our entire. Uh, uh, this is gonna make me so angry, and I don't have time to be accurately angry about this. <laughs> but go on. Yes, we so we've been discussing about rights women have been getting slowly and slowly, uh, and they now have a new freedom, which is riding a bicycle. Um, it was announced the new policy was announced earlier this month, uh, but a woman still has to wear her abaya. Did I pronounce that right, Armin? Mohammed bin Salman, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they still have to wear their their traditional clothing, which is loose fitting uh, full length robes. Um, they have to wear those while riding their bikes uh, now. And the, the article goes on to say other things that we've announced already. Women will finally be able to drive cars this summer. Um, and the article does want to point out that, you know, even though Saudi Arabia is throwing some bones to women's rights, uh, it's so still a hellhole for agnostics. And for women who have had enough of the patriarchy. Yeah, uh, he, uh, I'll just comment. I'll just read the top co two comments and co uh, make a comment like this. If you want to run a theocracy or any, any form of dictatorship, just take a whole bunch of rights away first. And then when you want to have more political prisoners or if you want to wage a war that kills a lot of innocent people, then you have these little token rights to give back and get distract the media every time you want to do something abhorrent. So if you want to arrest a whole bunch of people or execute a whole bunch of people and you don't want that to dominate the, med uh, the media, just just give biking. Now you have so much to play with. Just let women bike um, and then also kill a whole bunch of people and then let women go to stadiums and then bomb a whole bunch of people. Uh, just know that the these other things that you give away is going to get way more attention uh, than the other other war crimes that you're committing it's so it, so the first move you make just make sure you take a whole bunch of rights away meaningless rights that giving it back to them is not going to cost you anything uh and it's going to it's going to just play such good pr uh let me read the first comment right. uh seed hunt is saying because it is her own when they ride bicycles when they ride when they ride bicycle they feel sexual euphoria through bicycles, through the bicycle seat. Um, in the end, okay, this is just a. In the end, they. I want to know up, what bicycle seat he's using. Yeah, is, is a, <laughs> does the bicycle seat vibrate or something? Uh, actually, that's a great I don't idea. Want to know. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, <laughs> it's going to encourage a lot more people to go biking. Uh, I will go biking more. <laughs> <laughs> I want the seat. In the end, they end up sit, uh, sitting on the seat wrong way, which is against Islam. I, by the way, that's a joke. It's not being serious. Mish is saying, country so backward that women being allowed to ride bicycle is called progress. Uh, the legislators are joking themselves. All right, that's a good comment. Let's go to the next one. All right, oh my God! I can, see, this is so. We have only a few minutes, and I have so many comments on this that, but I can't make it today. But go on. Yeah. So um, we all know that Trump bombed Syria last week, um, and it's now coming out that people are saying that he maybe, possibly, could have bombed Syria due to a slew of uh, shows that he watched, such as Fox and Friends, and tweets he made of it. So they're saying that. Fox and Friends Morning Crew um, argued that what we should be doing is telling the Russians every Syrian military base is a target, and if you're there, it's your problem. And then minutes later, uh, Trump went out and echoed that exact same thing in a tweet saying Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because uh, they will be coming nice, new, and smart. 
you shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. So um, Fox and Friends says something, he tweets something, and uh, Jim Mattis, um, the defense secretary, is saying that he, he urged Trump to wait to bomb Syria until we got congressional uh, approval, but Trump went ahead and was like, no, no. Um, and other officials are saying that it almost seemed like Trump wanted to be seen backing up a series of his tweets with action uh, rather than waiting to go to war on a, on a rational way. So, all, right. all right. Let's just read the comments because I, I want to get into this, but I think we need an entire episode on this. I'm, I'm either going to bring this up on this um, Atheist Republic discussions um, or the Secular Jihadist podcast. Um, I don't know which one, but I think this deserves a lot more uh, analysis, this whole Syria thing. Um, but let's just go over the comments um, and then call it a day because I really need to go use the washroom. Um, so uh, Salvador is saying, so his, t is, so his tweet uh, cost is 120 millions uh, in taxpayer money wasted on tomahawks. Let me laugh about Trump tards defending their uh, messiah. Scott is saying it's called doing what you say you'll do. So he's defending Trump. Finally, we have a politician that actually does what he says he'll do. Tom is saying, once again, I'm more liberal than most. But what does this have to do with atheism? That means other politics shouldn't be involved. Again, Tom, as we point out of, uh, often, that Atheist Republic is a group by atheists for atheists. Uh, and we talk about whatever our, the Atheist Republic community shows that they're mostly interested in. Uh, when atheists t get together, they don't always just talk about religion. We talk about other things as well. Um, you know, if, so as long as the community, Atheist Republic community is interested in something, we talk about it. If you want us to talk about other topics, comment on the YouTube video. Uh, tell us what news you're interested for us to bring up. By the way, Ali, let's make sure that previous news is, I know you look into the group and see what people are interested in, but let's make sure that we look at the comment section of each video to see what to cover next week, okay? This is important. Yeah. I do want to encourage people to leave comments on the video because that's how our YouTube channel gets more uh, uh, recognized and uh, suggested. So please, if you guys want to help this, uh, other than donating to our Patreon, that would be great. But if you want to help in other ways, commenting uh, on the YouTube uh, would, be, uh, would be very helpful. And subscribing and leaving a like, uh, obviously. But yeah, Tom, if you have uh, suggestions for news to us to cover, let us know. Uh, any any uh, anything to cover in the YouTube live chat or in the Facebook chat? If not, no, nope, not in Facebook. Chat. I saw something. Moose is saying Moose Gal is saying Trump is making it easier to have arms deals. It's a fucking propaganda PR thing uh, in the U uh, in the U.S. over Assad using chemical weapons and its and its people. I have so many comments on all of this right now, but I really have to go listen. Uh, we'll dedicate an entire episode. Guys, we are atheists, but atheists are interested in a shitload of other stuff and geopolitics and all of that uh, is one of them. If you think that we shouldn't be talking about these things, then you're part of the minority. Many people in the atheist community, want it, want, when we get together, uh, we disagree on many things and we agree on many things and we, we want to... Get, being atheist and getting together is just the just original excuse for us to, be able to get together, but we have opinions about many things and uh, you know, having this community is not just about atheism. It's, it's for atheists, but it's not just about atheism. Uh, Bij is saying, thanks, Armin, Ali, and everyone else. Cheers. Uh, Brian is saying... Thank you, Bij. Um, Brian, uh, we should have... Brian is saying Trump uh, is a living rent, living rent free in the minds of all. Um, Brian thinks we're obsessed with Trump. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sunny is saying, I liked it. It does haram. Uh, take care, Beach. Bye, oh, take it. Bye, guys. Uh, live long and prosper, Mike. Mike, thank you so much. I like I like how Mike uh, says goodbye every time. It's very it sounds very epic. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ellie. I'm thank gonna... you, everyone. Yes, thank Th you. Bye. Thanks, Ellie and Armin and all. Yay, thank you, Moose. Thanks, everyone. I love this channel. Oh, thank you, Moose. Stop streaming. Bye.